Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Boogeyman. So today I want to talk about a game that I encountered while playing with one of my Christmas gifts, or Mythmas to all my hypersensitive fellow heathens. The game is called Layers of Fear by a company I previously never heard of, Bloober Team. Bloober Team? You play as a painter with a characteristic hobble, is a kind of a peg leg, uh, who has gone pretty loopy on his pursuit of the ultimate aesthetic. Uh, I first tried the demo version while I was still getting used to the Xbox One. The game is only available, by the way, on Xbox One and PC, so sorry to my PlayStation brethren, but stay tuned for PS friendly reviews coming soon. Uh, and I feel somewhat dumb, but either a bug in the game or my stupidity kept me from setting the gamma properly and I thought I could still play it. It looked something like this, so yeah. But I persevered and reset the gamma and boy am I glad that I did. The game begins in a very traditional uh, horror setting. As rain falls and thunder rolls, we find ourselves in the entry of what I suppose you would call a Victorian style home. Architect savvy fans, all 0.5 of you, flame on if I'm wrong. And the few controls you need are subtly introduced. And you don't really need much. The control scheme is very straightforward and should be familiar to anyone who's played any frictional games or Outlast or even any point and click games. There's a basic inventory system that never exceeds one item, be it a key or an item related to a simple puzzle, and intuitive physics for opening doors, drawers, and other such tasks. The thing that struck me the most once I could see the game was how detailed uh, the art direction proved. Everything is close to photorealistic for the most part, and a haunting classy score helps the game's setting. And this setting really helps not only with the tone being slightly distant to contemporary times, but not so distant as to appear alien, uh, but also helps sell the story of an obsessed painter who makes a somewhat Faustian decision for the sake of his art. While it works, the story is only really as solid as it needs to be and not much beyond, but the minimalist approach makes that an actually wise decision on the game developer's part. What really makes the game special, however, is the simple mechanic that drives the majority of the game. Everything in your peripheral vision is subject to change. Open a door and walk through, only to turn around and see a sturdy wall where there was once an entryway. This mechanic is used with such grace that I find myself enthralled. I only described the most cliched example on purpose, because any description would not do the subtle shifts and general sense of unease any justice, nor would I feel alright trying and risking spoiling one of the funnest and spookiest surprises. And spooky this game definitely is. Having plowed through the entirety currently available, I could honestly say that the, even this jaded horror fan was surprised quite, quite a few times. Although the game has no enemies per se, and plays as straightforward as it gets, this does nothing to remove the sense that your character is very much so in danger. I highly recommend this game. It's a deliciously evil good time. Delicious. Though I must caution that at least on the Xbox One, and possibly the PC version, I haven't played that so I can't really say for sure, the game is part of an early access program via Steam. Uh, think of it like the first bits of an episodic game with the last episodes yet to come. But what there is, is a good chunk of moody, atmospheric, and most surprisingly, incredibly well-crafted spooks. <laughs> so check it out if you dare. Like this review? Want me to look into other spooky places for other spooky faces? If so, comment below and subscribe to see more. <laughs> like if you found this enlightening. And dislike if you found me dismal. Till next time, this is the Boogeyman reminding you to never fear. Not even me. Boo! Other spooky places for other spooky faces. Dismal.